So let's set the record straight. Manliness isn't about confining to stereotypes or modern world expectations. It's about living in alignment with your authentic self and living with purpose and having confidence. So in this video, I'm going to give you some tips to help reclaim your masculine energy. We're going to shine a light on these habits and help you break free from their grip. The number one thing is being antisocial. The power of brotherhood cannot be denied. When you've got a group of like-minded friends, could be even family, it allows you to access a deeper part of your masculinity. When you get together with your brothers, you could be cousins, uncles, your dad, a group of like-minded people, it allows you to share ideas, to give each other challenges and hold each other accountable. These are the people that you can turn to when life knocks you down or gives you a beating. You know, myself, I've strengthened the connection with my cousins, my younger brothers, and we've formed an alliance that is unbreakable. And it's probably one of the best things I've done for myself lately. You know, we're constantly motivating each other, challenging each other, and just being there for each other, you know, holding each other accountable and bringing new ideas and information to the group that we can all benefit from. So the second thing is not taking care of your skin. Now, in the past, or even currently, there's been a stereotype of men that have dirty hands, you know, covered in acne, just dirt from head to toe. And I reckon that's absolutely stupid, honestly. Taking care of your skin is just as important as taking care of your lungs, your heart, or any other organs, because that's what your skin is. It's an organ. So why would you let your skin become clogged, dirty, you know, basically infected with fungus and all sorts of other skin-related issues? So with that being said, you have to start a skincare routine, just a general face cleanser, you know, moisturizer, take daily showers, two a day if you have to, and overall, don't let your skin become clogged and dirty, but on a side note, it's not just your skin, by the way, it's your whole body, you should be grooming, haircuts, trimming your nails, you know, whatever it takes to present yourself as the best version that you could possibly be to this world. Now, the third and argu arguably the most damaging is watching online sexual content. Now, this is something that robs all men from their masculinity. You know, when you let one off to some online video, you're programming your mind to believe that you've already succeeded one of the human's most important jobs, which is to reproduce. You know, it's letting out a lot of prolactin, you know, prolactin is the complete opposite of dopamine. I'm sure you've heard of dopamine. It makes you quiescent and not in the pursuit of motivation. The Andrew Huberman's words, exactly. So, watching online content can over-sexualize your brain. You'll become hypersexual, and you will have the wrong expectations of intimate moments of life. So, not only does it over sexualize your brain but it also becomes with some pretty other nasty side effects like erectile dysfunction just general anhedonia or the opposite of joy for life basically you know you become very shallow as a person from all those repeated dopamine spikes it lowers your baseline dopamine so you need more exciting things just to reach the same amount of pleasure the fourth is not keeping your space clean. You see, your environment around you is a direct reflection of what's happening within you. I've heard a saying that goes like, show me someone's lawn and you can see how they're doing in life. You know, people that just let their lawn grow to above their head, above their knees, whatever, they're generally lacking the motivation, you know, lacking the drive to get simple general things done. So, do your day, wash your clothes whenever they need to be washed. Clean up any rubbish, you know. If, if your walls are all dirty, wipe them off. Vacuum, 
sweep the floor, you know, just general chores and cleaning, it can have a massive impact on your overall life satisfaction. Clean the dishes when they need to be done. Anything that needs to be done, just stop putting it off and you'll get yourself into a routine where it's, it's simple, honestly. Over the past few years, I made it a daily habit. As soon as I arose, rose in the morning, I would clean my environment and I actually started to enjoy it, you know. It's uh, long-term gratification. Over the years, I made it a daily habit as soon as I rose in the morning to clean my environment. I started to actually enjoy it, you know. Anytime something looked out of place or there was mess anywhere to be seen, I'd just get straight to it because I rose my... I, I increased my expectation of who I am. I identify as a clean person, you know, so I'm always going to keep my environment clean. The fifth is always eating takeaway. Now, this is something that I struggled with over the past few years, my whole life nearly, is never cooking, never making your own food or always buying fast food options. Now, you've seen what a McDonald's burger looks like years down the track. It doesn't even grow mold. It just goes rock solid and dehydrates, basically. You know, the things they're putting in these foods to preserve them is basically poison. You know, when you're eating this food, you're poisoning yourself. I remember I, I'd ha I had ate takeaway for a good six months in a row. You know, maybe one or two home-cooked meals and... I just felt like in the gutter, honestly. I felt like absolute crap. And I remember cooking a few meals over about a week's time, no takeaway for a week. And I instantly, I turned to my girl, my ex at the time, and I said, I feel amazing, don't you? So, like, just off the bat, I noticed how much of a different feeling eating home-cooked meals compared to takeaway. You know, all the nutrients that home-cooked meals have in them is far superior to any takeaway. No one could even pay me to eat takeaway nowadays, like a million dollars maybe. But other than that, I'm, I'm not even going to go near it. But nowadays, I cook every single meal, you know, eggs, beef, lamb, potatoes, carrots. I eat a pretty whole food diet now and also take these uh, beef organ supplements. You know, you they're about... $50, $50 for about a month's worth, you know, you could get any other brand, but those will honestly bulletproof your life into becoming the most energized, you know, happy version of yourself. The amount of nutrients that are in organ meats, it's the most superior food on the whole planet, arguably. So enough of this takeaway, you can cook, you can do it, I know you can. The six is no exercise routine. You know, that's also something that I've struggled with throughout the majority of my life is never exercising. I'd go for walks, long walks, but and honestly just ate into my muscle, you know, I was I was atrophying all the muscle that I could possibly grow. So just because you walk, just because you move around, that's not exercise. It's better than nothing, but you're not intentionally exercising to build muscle or to become healthier, more flexible, and just to keep up with our natural human pace of movement. You know, our ancestors, they used to carry heavy things. They used to be out in the sun all day, moving around, you know, resting when needed. But they were far more productive than the current human is today when it comes to movement. So set up a exercise routine if you'd like. I'm not telling you to do anything. You always make your own choices. I'm just telling you what is beneficial. So whether it's 20 push-ups, some pull-ups, even if you want to go for a bike ride to get that heart rate, you know, some fast-paced cardio, you could go canoeing, kayaking, uh, do some box jumps on your stairs, you know, whatever you can find, whatever you can do, anything is better than nothing. Start off by giving yourself a certain amount, you know. For me personally, I started off with just some light bench press, a few, few pull-ups and push-ups, you know. And I'd done that for about a week straight, you know, rest day in between. And 
then I started to gradually progressive overload, you know. Now I'm doing like just over an hour workout, um, like 30 sets, you know, so about 15 sets per muscle group. And it's honestly the most amazing thing that I could ever have done. It's increased my energy, you know, through the mitochondria and also it's just made me a more fulfilled person. The most enjoyable part of my day is when I'm exercising, except for leg day. But yeah, other than leg day, arm day, chest and back, you know, I'm doing an Arnold split. So it's pretty much the most enjoyable part of my day. I'm not going to really touch too much into the health benefits, but it is a main critical factor for low testosterone and being disconnected from the masculine side of yourself is having no exercise routine. So get into it and get out. Uh, so last but not least is being financially irresponsible. So a lot I know a lot of people who are very financially irresponsible. They don't save for the big things and they just, you know, spend or spend on the small things. And me personally, I used to waste a lot of my money on things that I didn't really need, you know, in the moment per purchases. You don't really think it through. And a big factor to embracing your masculine self is to be able to provide. And if you're being financially irresponsible, then you're not necessarily going to be able to provide for even yourself or let alone, you know, a family or a partner. So a big uh, tip that I'd have is if you have any large purchases that you have your mind on, whether it's an item, uh, you know, new pair of shoes, watch, jewellery, whatever it is, take a screenshot of the item or write it down in a book, whatever you feel like, and come back to it in a few days, possibly a week, if it's not a necessity. You'd be surprised at how often your mind will change. So you might want that product right there and right then, but as you give it some time and the desire for the item sort of wears off, you might come to realise that you don't even desire it anymore. That's a big technique that I've used and I do it with a lot of things that I might necessarily want but not need. So yeah, it can help you narrow down to between needs and wants and it can save you a lot of money in the long run. So there you have it. That's seven things that are destroying your manliness. So remember, as a man, masculinity is a journey. It's never too late to take a dive and get into it. So with that being said, see you in the next one.